Hi, it's Levon. Welcome to my channel and welcome back to Step by Step. Today we're going to paint a little desk, which could easily be used as a vanity. And the top of it had some paint or nail polish on it. And the, the hardware on it was really cute, but I actually couldn't remove it. Um, not sure what kind of fasten, fastener it had on there, but I didn't have any tools that would work with it. So to get started, I used Dixie Bell Slick Stick on the top of the surface because it was indeed very slick. Typically I don't sand, but uh, on this piece, on those pieces uh, where there was paint, I did sand that so that it, we had a smooth surface. So the Slick Stick is a bonding primer and it's meant to adhere paint to slick surfaces. Um, you don't always need it, but it really helps speed up the process. So usually I do a top in thirds and then I'll do long sweeping strokes to eliminate any brush strokes. And this brush is a dollar store brush. It's kind of an inexpensive brush and it was fine for that purpose. Here you're looking at Dixie Belle's Antebellum Blue and one of Dixie Bell's flat brushes. It's a synthetic brush that I just love, even though I abuse my brushes and you could tell by the handle. Uh, but look how these brushes just hold the paint and they allow you to get in the crevices. These brushes are fantastic. The, the handles of mine look like that because I'm in the retail store. So if I have to stop what I'm doing, I often throw the brush in a sealed plastic bag um, to keep it so I don't have to wash it in between or sometimes I'll have an open container of water and I'll just throw it down in the water. The synthetic brushes, the Dixie Bell brushes do not mind being in water so that's just good for a person like me that just kind of needs to get things done in a hurry. So every now and then I have a big long brushing sesh, brush washing session so um, I would not be a good person to do a video on brush care, maybe someday. Um, so I'm very methodical when I paint though. I always paint one side of the piece first, um, not start to finish, but usually just that step that I'm working on. But it helps me stay focused and not overwhelmed with the size of a piece. I am keeping the drawers in to paint, but sometimes you have to pull them out. Like in the case of this piece, uh, normally I can just paint the front um, but then pull it out and just reach under the drawer and paint but this had a detail piece of molding so kind of had to pull it out in order to get that detail so um, just carefully putting the drawer back in and you can see I have my cold shoulder top on because I am get was getting ready for a party that evening Sometimes, you know, it's close to Christmas, so sometimes I have to dress uh, from, from morning till night. So um, I may have a meeting and I'm in the store, and then in this case I had a party afterwards. So I um, had to dress for the occasion, and usually I don't get paint on my clothes. I get it all over my hands, though, so I have to wash, <laughs> and um, I wash frequently. So you can see how great this brush works. I'm just getting in the details and it really makes it easy. And again, I could not remove this hardware. It just had uh, like a, on the back of it, it was almost like you had to put in something with uh, threads in order to get it uh, removed. And I have never seen one like that. So I often paint over hardware anyway, and it's really simple to do. So. Uh, just paint around the, the handle as you can see there and just paint the top of it. So I continue to paint the piece and um, while you're watching me paint if you are interested in Dixie Bell products if you want to purchase any of them um, just check out the description box because I'm going to put a link below. Now here I'm going to use some clear wax so I've used two coats on the, the desk and even though this wax looks white, it is clear. This is a different day, and I actually had to go to a different party that night, too. So it doesn't look like I'm very dressed up, but 
I actually am. <laughs> so wax is cool because you don't have to really worry about brush strokes and which way you're putting it on. Obviously I'm not being very particular and the reason for that is because you are going to wipe most of it back off and then let it dry and then buff it. So um, I love clear wax and I use it a good bit. And so here after I finished, I'm just pulling back most of the wax off of the piece so that it's not really super waxy. Which makes sense, right? Okay, so here I'm going to do a little science experiment. So you can see I am a little dressed up there. <laughs> so I wanted to use gilding wax. One thing I don't show you is that I did a transfer on this piece and you'll see it later but I wanted purple wax and I don't have purple wax so I'm mixing the clear wax with um, aubergine paint from Dixie Belle of course and just putting a little bit in there and I look very serious when I'm doing it but I just mix these together and I stir and stir and stir them because basically I'm mixing two different consistencies even though the wax is um, what you would think wax is like petroleum like kind of like uh, like Vaseline it's not it's a water-based product I don't know how that all works but all of the products are pretty much water-based so you see I'm a little sloppy lost a piece but I'm just gonna put that back in later so I'm just trying to press basically press the paint into the wax just kind of keeping that consistency so it's gonna take me a little while to blend this wax I'm retrieving that piece that I lost <laughs> so I hope that you would like to subscribe to my channel so please do that and hit the notifications bell and then that way you'll always be notified whenever there's a new video coming up. Like I said, we do this every Saturday at 4 o'clock and um, right now I do it recorded and uh, eventually I'd like, with enough subscribers, I would love to do this show live. So. Um, it's getting mixed up I think I keep adding a little bit more wax to it because I just want a little more waxy not quite so thin so I take the end of the spoon that I'm using and just add just a little bit more wax and again I'm, I'm pretty serious about it There's all kinds of really cool videos coming up. I'm doing a holiday home tour, and also I did one, um, another one with a bunch of Christmas houses. That's pretty cool to check out. That's just a little bit different from the regular painting videos. Okay, so I'm ready to wax, and I'm just taking my finger and wiping the spoon off because next I'm going to apply the wax, and I wanted to use my finger to apply it. So I just want to wanted you to see the consistency that um, the wax is. So I was pretty generous when I was putting it on, and I'm just going to dip my fingertip into it and just touch it to the hardware and everywhere that I want that wax. So the pigment is dark enough that, and the wax thickens it up enough that it just stays where I want it. When I'm doing this, I usually um, put the wax on the hardware and then I just kind of make sort of like a little bit of a halo around uh, the outsides of the piece. So just like the other wax, I'm going to pull it off with, with a rag. But you can see that it's kind of staying where it was put, just getting rid of the excess. And some of it you'll see like there's a little bit of white residue that's left and that is the wax but it will dry clear so I guess I didn't have it all mixed up but that's okay and you can see the transfer there that I did and you can see why I chose the purple because there's a little bit of purple in the flowers 
so that's that's why so I'm just being kind of delicate and just removing a little bit of that wax and just leaving some a hint of that purple behind that aubergine color so I would love for you to comment and tell me if you're brave enough to mix some wax and what color you would use so a little bit of the chunks of wax are there and that's okay we're just gonna wipe it on out And I'll be able to keep this. I'll put a lid on that container and I'll be able to keep this. So the next time I want some purple wax, I'll have it already mixed up. There's no rule that says that you have to stick with the beautiful 65 colors that we already have. <laughs> you can do your own thing and you can blend. So I had a chair sitting around and I thought it would make a perfect combo to add this chair. It had a lot of the similar curves in it and I thought it was a really good complement to it so I just did it straight up in the antebellum blue and I'm very methodical like I said when I paint I do one side at a time in this case I did the top of the chair first and then I flipped it when it was dry and did the bottom just because that's how I chose to do it this time um, but usually I complete one side before I turn now this is something that a lot of people hate to do is the rungs I find painting so relaxing that it doesn't bother me at all to do the rungs. I actually kind of enjoy it. Um, so I just love how much paint these brushes hold and it, it makes it really easy. You don't have to keep dipping. I do one side of it and then I come back and do the other side and then when I'm on, on the other side I do the same. And usually just one sweeping stroke down um, uh, the length of the spindle like that. Um, blends all those strokes together and there it is all complete and we're going to show you a little bit of close-up so we staged it and i just love how the the aubergine looks on the antebellum blue and it looks really fresh with those transfers and it's very dainty Again, this piece could be used as a vanity as well as a desk. So, but definitely um, a little more feminine. Thank you so much for watching. And again, I'd love for you to subscribe. And we do this every Saturday, so please join us again. If you hit the notifications bell, you'll know when we do it. Um, visit us on levintagedecor.company. That's my website. And then on Instagram, we're levintagedecor. And on Facebook, we're the Vintage Decor Altoona. You have a wonderful day.